Hi, I'm Jesse McCready. I'm with Animodule. Check out my modules at animodule.com. This has zero to do with modules, though. I'm going to be attempting to make a dividing head. And from this piece of stock, I'm going to cut a 60 tooth gear. I think the diameter wants to be point two seven two eight three inches I don't know how this will work out uh, I don't have the best lighting I don't have the best camera positions but we'll give her a try and maybe you can try it out yourself first thing I'm gonna do is face the stock off since I've got it sticking out of the chuck so far I'm gonna take a light cut so it may take a couple cuts I won't subject now I have my marks. I go five eighths to hang on to and five eighths for the gear. This five eighths is gonna end up being a shoulder and I'll tap it and put a keyway in. Maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna try to press fit it. Anyway, but then that gives me a reserve. I won't get too thick or to make it the little case it's got to sit in. Has to be too wide. Now, I'm not sure what the drill is going to be. I'm not sure what the bore is going to be. I think the spindle nose is going to be an inch and a half, eight. To be honest with you, I'm not sure. So... I think I'm safe drilling this to two inches but I don't even have to decide right now hence why I'm doing it like this I'll just cut the shoulder I'll cut this off in the saw I'll take this piece flip it around bore it in the three jaw holding on to the shoulder I'll skim this to the right size when it's approximately two and seven two two point seven five and it needs to get two point seven two eight I think and then if I need to true the shoulder up I can toss it in the four jaw later. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. This isn't running in a machine or anything. It's a dividing head. 5 eighths looks like a good size for the gear. I'm just making it up. So we're going to trim it off. Start turning it down. I think an inch and a half will be fine for the bore, so I can run the shoulder down to two inches pretty safely. I don't even think it matters much, just so long as it's out of the way of the gear teeth. I, I don't even know what you call that. The minimum diameter of the gear teeth, I'm pretty sure that's not right though. Alright, we take light cuts because we got a lot of stick out. Still chatter there. All right. Well, I won't suffer you through this. There you go. Got rid of some of that chatter. Just turn it up a little bit. Change my plan. 
We're doing it all right here. I'm just got a cut, got the shoulder on, gonna bore it, and then I'll get it to its final dimension. This will be the last drill before I bore. Got the big old drill bit in there. I, I decided I'm gonna go with a half inch, an inch and a half shaft. We'll go with an inch and a half bore because I found bearings in that size and they're on the way. The spindle nose thread is going to be inch and a half. I think by eight. I got to look up if that's standard. It sounds standard. It sounds regular enough to me. <laughs> so, so we'll go with that. And this is an inch and a quarter drill here. I'll do that and then bore it. And then. I may wait until the ball bearings get here to bore it. Or maybe just bore it slightly undersized. Alright, let's give her a go. on the stone but hear that whine the bearing in the motor it's like that when it's cold you probably stop it and start it again and stop whining I grease them up side okay so we're drilled out to I don't know if you can read that or not doubtful huh it says 1.3 I should have read this first huh 1.3 <laughs> 1.38 That's not my my name by the way. I'm a I'm a big fan of Dead Man's Tools. Ah, uh, y'all can't see that. You wouldn't even see that if I didn't point it out. So 1.38. I'm looking for okay. Yeah, it's probably closer to Oh, yeah. 1.25 11, 1.61, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 
two six one. I skipped a digit there. So uh, we're looking for one and a quarter. That's good. That's just because you got five eighths and five eighths, and I'll cut this with the saw, and I don't want any little burr left there when I after I cut it with the saw. So got that. The drill was an inch and a quarter. I've got an inch and a half drill, but I want to keep it a little small so that I can press fit these bearings and this gear onto the shaft here. Got my boring bar here. I don't know if you can see this, but you don't have to spend a ton of money on fancy tool holders. It might make things a little faster, but I'm just working in my garage here. I made this out of a piece of forklift fork. I welded a railroad spike to it. Yeah, I set it in here and I bored it. Then I put the tool holder. I made the tool. I made the uh, boring bar too, just out of a piece of 4140 or something like that it may be tool steel if I just set that perpendicular or on a 45 degree I guess set on a 45 degree I figured the center height I'm using quarter inch lathe tool bits in here using quarter inch laid high-speed steel lathe tools in here so I put an eighth inch shim under so center is lowered by an eighth of an inch is that right I think so uh, it's it always twists my head around when I gotta figure that stuff out but it's something like that so that should always be assuming that this is level should always be approximately center height you need twist it and turn it to get you different angles but it's at center height so we're going to bore this out I think everything's headed in the right direction what do we got I guess I got to take A quarter inch an eighth inch because I got to fit you know I got to split that in half I want to take a quarter inch of the entire ID split it in half eighth inch 0 0.25 0 0.125 so it's one full rotation on the micrometer dial but I'll probably I'll take it a hundred thou and play with it a little bit then I've got let's see if you can see this here you give you a little motion sickness I've got a little indicator set up with a magnet to tell me how far I'm going so what do you got Let's zero that out. Oh, we're not touching. That would help, wouldn't it? We'll zero that out. And I want to take that an inch and a quarter. Or more like, yeah. No, it's an inch and a quarter. Because we only we got 1.261 in there. So, all right. So, you got zero that here. Good here. Uh, we'll call it 20. And I got to change the speed. 
All right, speed should be good. Got to change the quick change. We're running a little faster. May run it just a little too fast. Just fast enough to get some deflection. And I take light cuts because this still has more stick out than I like. I want to say the bearings aren't squealing, but I don't want to jinx it. just about there I think I'm pretty consistently measuring 1.493 yeah so I'm uh, I'm using dead man's tools and I don't know how to use them so I got two calipers and a telescoping four gauge and a micrometer just to triple check myself I think this is uh, just about cold down this is all about your feel right yep Except there's shrinking. So that doesn't feel very good. <laughs> See, these are my good calipers. I keep them in a box. We got, you can't see that, can you? We got 4.9. These are my scratch calipers, but not awful. I just got them. They're still in nice shape. I'm blocking the view, aren't I? Blocking your view. See? And come on. Come on. Yeah. 
three. And I'm real new to these guys, so I don't know if I'm using them right. Always ends up coming up a little bit bigger. Put them about in the same place as the other one. That's just because I don't know how to use them. I learn now. What is it? Uh, it's all about the feel. Feel a little twist, and it's good. As good as it's getting. I wonder if they these little pieces don't tweak when you tighten it up. What do you got here? And this I'm used to a micrometer with a ratchet. This does not have one, but dead man's tools and everything. And we got four point one point four nine three five. Hey, I'm just squeezing too hard. I don't think so, though. Yeah, the bore gauge and the micrometer always end up a hair bigger. But <clears throat> it's pretty consistent. I'm shooting for 1.498. And that leaves two thou for a press fit. So I'll let it cool down. Yeah, it feels pretty cool. And I'll take a little skin pass. And I'll clean this up to the proper diameter. And I'll see you shortly. Alright, we've got a little excursion to make before finishing the gear I got her I got her cut off here this will be the shoulder the boss maybe I'll drill it and tap it maybe I'll cut a keyway maybe the press fit is good who knows I'm just making it up as I go on the way there I've got to make a milling cutter to cut the gear so I'm just going to make it out of this piece of stock it may be carbon steel it's just scrapyard steel I'd be lying if I said I know what it was it had a key cut in it so my guess it's a shaft of some kind and it's got some low alloy and or carbon in it but that's as far as I know I could cut off a little piece and forge it and test it, but I'm not going to do that before I do this. Then maybe I'll find out if I try to harden this. Or maybe it'll be junk and I'll throw it right in the can. <laughs> it's, uh, I got a little makeshift dog here. I'm just going to turn this down to three quarters three quarters work because my mill takes 40 taper and I have very little tool holding capability I've got ER40, ER32 collet holders they both will hold three quarters I ideally like a thicker shank for this but then I can use whatever's in there I also have one three quarter inch tool holder but it's NMTB 40 not that's what came with the machine not the cat 40 that I'm using it and has the drawbar installed for currently all right well there's, a, there's enough uh, chatter in here let's see I got this little homemade dog I made it out of a piece of square tubing and I welded a, a leg to it and tapped it to see if it blows up and knocks all my teeth out safety glasses on so.
sideways. There you go. Well, I bet you're glad you watched that. <laughs> okay, let me fix this up and I'll... Okay, that was a bad idea. Who didn't know that? I was trying to avoid... I wanted it to be balanced. I was thinking I'd turn it between centers I turn the three quarters down, then flip it, and then just clean the uh, the wide part up. Whatever it is is arbitrary. Things like uh, one point three eight or something like it, it doesn't matter. It's seems like a good size because <laughs> I'm gonna I'll punch a hole through here and put in a lathe bit. I want it to be perpendicular so that I can use the same lathe bit that I cut the thread on a worm with. But it doesn't really matter. It's not going to be balanced anyway, so I'll just trim it up in a three jaw and turn it around and be done with it. even worse over here just bear with me though now's the next phase for this piece maybe when I uh, get to cutting the gears I'll figure something a little better out look at that if I move you a little more like okay uh, the vise I got this edge trimmed in that's that's it I'm just <laughs> It's an, uh, I'm just getting used to this mill and uh, trying to figure it all out here I'm going to assume that it's level I want to use a quarter inch lathe bit the lathe tool so I found the center line and I moved over 
half of five sixteenths of an inch was that five thirty seconds of an inch no I moved over an eighth of an inch and I'll just file out the corners I got a five sixteenths end mill in here just to get a flat spot before a drill the center of this is the only part of relevance I just t chose I moved it in from the end 200 thou that's just arbitrary seems like it should be a good number alright here we go Feeds and feeds? I don't know. Looks right. Check that out. Give her a little center drill. Pardon me. There we go. Drill 516. This may be too fast. Don't feel like swapping the belt all around. We'll find out. Oh, there you go. That's good. That's good. Alright, so I'm working on a worm here. My thinking is I leave a half inch there and a half inch there so I can hold it if I need to put in a four jaw later. And so I can drill it and tap it if it needs a set screw. And if not, I can just lop that off. The gear is 5 8 so I'm threading 5 8 here. Got a nice piece of 
8260? 8620? 8620 sounds close. <laughs> sounds, sounds more, it's just, just a piece of steel head lying around. Now, I gotta figure out the depth. The little, little thingy I got here says, the depth of thread is half the pitch plus a tenth. Or ten, ten thousandths. I got 0.15 for seven threads per inch, uh, approximately. I'm sure it's, I'm not trying to. I'm just, I just hope it works. <laughs> I like it to be right on, but so I'm guessing. Looks like 1.5. It's pretty darn close. So it'll be or 0.15. So I'm guessing go 0 0.075, 0 0.085. So it'd be just over a sixteenth of an inch for the depth. Seven threads per inch. All right, I'm gonna cut a relief on each side here. And start cutting a worm. I'm gonna try and go ahead and make a cut. I got everything set up where it wants to be. You've got the compound set at 14 degrees. We're just slightly smaller than 14 and a half. I cut the reliefs to the depth I'm looking for. And I've got my tool all cut up like at 29 degrees. Alright, I have this turned and press fit a mandrel to it. It's in the collet check, in the spin indexer. Now my next hurdle is to find the center. I've got an indicator and a magnetic base. I don't have anything that clips onto my spindle. I guess I could take this out and hook up an indexer uh, uh, indicator to that but I've got this uh, planar shaper gauge I know that's square I in uh, where is it we're gonna catch a little corner here I don't have any attachments for it and I don't have a screw that would fit, but since I know it's square, I go ahead and put a little scratch mark. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little mark. And since this squares up from the table, you know that's the furthest point out, therefore the center. The center. And this is a couple thou out. I'm not sure if it's my vise or the indexer or the collar chuck or my mandrel. It's, I'm learning. I think it's probably good enough to go. Here, also made this fly cutter to cut the gear. 
it's this is the same bit that I cut the worm with I just took it out and I put it in here this is a hole drilled through this piece of 4130 I think is what I had handy the cutting edge lands on center there's a little set screw there the height of this doesn't matter because I can change it with the quill so long as I know the center of height for the gear now is it square is everything perfect probably not but hopefully it'll be good enough That's <laughs> and how deep do I cut it I'm not sure I could probably look it up but I'm not gonna just yet if I need to I can make a hob if the worm is was it point one five uh, to, to, to point eight five deep then I'll make this point eight five deep and if it's not close enough we can reconfigure I, I'm gonna have to check the numbers again to see what 60 teeth is how 60 divides into 360 but I know it's a nice even number so I can use the spin indexer let me check that and then start making some cuts alright she's all zeroed out I found out after all my careful consideration to center the cutter it's got to run in reverse so it's not climb milling I guess I could turn it around but we'll just run it in reverse let's try Glasses on. You know, we can run a little faster. Unfortunately, there's no power feed on this yet. Oh, that was pretty good. I feel like it's a little more faster, but we got 20 thou, try 30 thou. Now I put us at a depth of cut of 50. Turn this up a little faster. Where was I? 50 thou. Need 35 more. Let's try another at.
smooth it. I'll probably turn it up a little higher. And five. And then we index this to six because sixty goes into three hundred and sixty six times. So do a little Not a full depth of cut. We'll take 30. Because that seems to be going all right. sound deeper than all the rest of them. I just came in too fast. Alright, I'm going to keep on going through. I'm not going to make you watch me cut all 60 teeth. See you in a row. times I had to tell me to stop in the right part I had to re make this cutter I had to cut a slot in it and drill it and tap it from the bottom because the set screw was not holding this in place and even with this crank down it still will slip I'm taking 20 thou cut but by the time I make it all the way around it had been losing a little depth so, but just about got it. I had a little oopsie here. I didn't have it pulled back far enough when I moved to the next number. So I pulled the whole collet chuck out. This is an ER40 chuck on a 5C collet. I pulled the whole chuck out and welded it up and chucked it up in a four jaw on a lathe and skimmed the weld off and I think it it, <laughs> it turned out nicer than I expected it's not the prettiest but I think it's going to do and I think I'll go around one more time we still got another I don't know, 20 thou depth to cut 
What's up? I was I was afraid to climb mill. At first. So I got over that path. Zero six two eight four. I'm still getting familiar with this mill. That's funny. If I move it back real fast, it feels like I get backlash and the climb mill will stutter. If I move it back nice and slow and smooth, it doesn't seem like it'll skip. I think maybe I gotta tighten the uh, tight and a half nut up. Alright, and there we go. 360 degrees. I will right, we'll go around again and see you soon. Okay, so we run around it one more time. I think the threads on the worm are a little wider than I'd have preferred. I cut it like an Acme thread, but I guess that's why there's all that math involving gears and their teeth, and I should really read <laughs> the machinery's handbook. I'm not trying to invent all this stuff myself. All of that math, woo! But um, oh, let's go, we go. Uh, ideally. I don't want to be doing this in the spin index. I want to set up a little fixture with a bearing. But in the meantime, it's not <laughs> it's not trying to spin it too fast or anything. And if it doesn't work in practice, it's good to know I can set up a hob just like this. It should be the same thing as cutting it. Oh, keep your finger out of there. Cutting this worm wheel here. Only you're putting some gashes in it to, for chip clearance. And then I harden it. Now this, the gear is 1045. So I may end up hardening it, because this is 8620, that was a bit hard, yeah, 8620. I don't know, I think for a divide, <laughs> I don't think it's going to see hard use as a dividing head, unless I'm a dope and I run it all on the machine like this. Uh, I'll show you more as I get it together, but there's... A worm and wheel. If a dope like me can do it, you can probably do it better. <laughs>